Hi guys, my name is Adam and what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be watching a Netflix documentary. It's about a brain surgeon from the US, I believe from Mayo Clinic. So it's one of the best clinics in the world. Let's get started. What I consider to be the most beautiful organ in the body, which is the brain, the unknown frontier. I can relate to this guy, like I remember the first day that I saw a neurosurgical procedure very vividly. Like that was one of the coolest memories from medical school. There was the time of the COVID pandemic at its finest. So our lecturer asked us if there is any volunteer to go for a surgery because they can take only one person. I immediately raised my hand up. He took me and we went to an OR where I saw the patient facing his face down the floor. It was a patient with a history of a lung cancer and he had meds in the brain, in the occipital lobe specifically. So the surgery was meant to be done from the back of his head. So he was facing to the floor, basically. He had cannules in like both hands and both legs. And that was quite an experience. Like that was, to me, that was extraordinary. Like looking at the live brain, pulsating from the rhythm. It's like this click moment where you just know it's beautiful and want to do it or do something related to that. When talking about brain tumors, even benign forms are dangerous because they can grow and even if they don't create metastasis, they just grow inside the skull and there is only so much place and the brain occupies most of it. So quickly it can become dangerous and cause loss of function or even death to the patient. So they have to be removed. And the other problem that arises is that they sometimes tend to grow around areas that are difficult to operate. So not all of the operations and in removing all of the tumor. Some of them just are meant to cut out as much as you can and then use radiotherapy to follow the treatment. The only way that I can do this is to keep Robert awake during the surgery. So here there are two things to talk about. First one, the brain is not innervated in pain nerves. So literally you can operate on it and it just doesn't feel itself. So you can use local anesthesia to uh, the external structures like the skull, skin and dura. And the other thing is that you want to have your patient conscious during such precision oriented operations because you can perform a neurological exam live on the patient. Like you don't have to wake, uh, wake them up basically to check and reoperate, you can do it simultaneously. And this is vital to, to not destroy the healthy tissue and to remove the cancerous one. Encourage me to go off to a little trail and just take the path that no one has taken before. I like how retrospective that whole documentary is and those little events from his childhood, like his grandpa instilling like self-belief in him and the need to just always choose the path that is least taken and to do something else. I was like, I always love those stories, like, and especially the ones that like these, cause he had it really hard. He was like a migrant from Mexico. He was like working on a farm and then went to Harvard. Like between these and that was like seven years of, you know, like, hard as hell decisions and some even life-threatening ones. And he just persevered, he survived and, and went through it and became the best. So this is like really inspiring to me always. So I highly recommend to watch this episode because it's like, you know, like they go back to his childhood and forth to his OR and it's just cool. Like there are little scenes where he does like a certain moves as a kid and he does the same moves in the operating room. It is cool. Okay, I want you to squeeze my fingers for me as tight as you can. 
Would you smile for me real quick? Give me a nice big smile. Show me some teeth, okay? Good. Stick your tongue straight out for me. No motor, no sensor. All right. So this is one of the coolest things in medicine that you can witness. What they are literally doing is tapping electrodes into the regions of his brain and assessing neurologically whether what area are they touching and what tissues are cancerous and they do not provoke any kind of loss of function and what is healthy tissue that should be protected as much as possible. And this is just beautiful. Look how they do it. And of course, what you see here is like a couple of scenes cut out from the whole material. It takes a lot of time and it's very tiring, both for patient and operator as well. So it's very, very long procedure. Hi. And I am dancing with the brain. Yeah, what he means by dancing with the brain is something that surprised me the first time as well. So when you study anatomy, and you work on dead brains, they're like prepared in a special way. So they're like in ethanol and then they are kind of like a rubber. It, those brains are like harder than live brains. Live brain is more spongy, more like soft. And when you realize that it's so fragile that even the rhythm of the heart makes it move it's just something surrealistic to watch like you see it just pumping pumping <laughs> and he has to operate on those tiny little areas to cut out the tumor and so he has to kind of go in the same rhythm as the brain and it's very interesting to see robert That's yeah absolutely there you go yeah those are the medicines we gave you so the reason this patient is experiencing dry mouth is not only caused because he's not drinking, but there are some certain drugs that you are getting intravenously during um, certain anesthetic procedures. I don't know which one is used right here, but the one that causes uh, this is atropine. It works by inhibition of salivary glands and mucus. It is sometimes used by anesthesiologists to prevent too much secretion of mucus and it helps when they're waking up the patient later. So I'm not sure if this is the one, but it looks like this. So he's getting a little brush with water on it and helping the patient prevent the dry mouth effect because they constantly need him to cooperate with them. He needs to talk, he needs to recognize voices, uh, certain melodies and colors and stuff like this. He needs to move his mouth and his hands, his muscles, so they need to talk. That's... And the other thing is just the discomfort of, you know, having like a sand in, in the mouth. All right, that would be all for today's episode. I hope you liked it. That was like the first reaction video in English that I've ever done, probably. I hope I'll improve over time. And thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.